I'm who I am, bro. So straight up. When you went to see Six Nine for for that interview with Act, you never thought about any type of protection. You know what I'm saying? Like you just went with your family like that. Hey, bro, I was the protection. I've been the protection before I was in the exec side. I was a foot soldier. Where, where? I walked eight different penitentiaries, two, three youth authorities, every juvenile hall in LA County, and then comes the streets. I'm not, you know, I am who I am. I can go from general to foot soldier because I come from the rank of foot soldier on up. So I don't, you know, I don't, what you mean? Protection for what? I'm going to sit down with academics in 6 9 who, who, who I need protection from. And, and, he, and he said he came by himself too. He so like, was by himself with a cameraman. Uh, I don't know who the other nigga was, but he was about five, six, and a non-affiliate nigga named Murphy. With three million dollars of jewelry and a half a million in a backpack. Not giving a fuck. <laughs> Just left a goddamn daytime club. Seen the footage. It's real shit. So that nigga's outside, outside. outside. That nigga outside, my nigga. Nigga wanted a fucking Starbucks. He wouldn't even let the people send the people. He like, nah, they gonna fuck my order up. He just went down there and went himself and came back. I tripped me out. Yeah, he moving around. Like, he, he really, that's what he really doing. Real shit. <laughs> hey, why? <laughs> Wait. Uh, when I see that shit, that shit was crazy. I told you the other footage. I know, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. You, know, you seen the other footage where the nigga jumped the jet, went to Georgia to go. That nigga jumped. That nigga jumped. Jumped out of Uber, a regular Uber. By out of, <laughs> cameraman, nigga, by themselves. <laughs> the footage, nigga. I'm telling you, them niggas showed up 15 deep. Nigga, that nigga, I'm telling you, nigga. He came, like, he came by himself with all his jury on, hopped out of a regular, <laughs> a regular Uber. It was like a Rav Four or some shit like that. Right now, my nigga, real shit. I, I ain't. I'm just calling. It how I see it, my nigga. This shit really, you know, DJ Head. I showed it to him. I showed him so much shit that day. I think he went home, went to sleep. Yeah, I ain't fucking with you. <laughs> so. Well, you know, you got to understand, bro, unless a nigga willing to go for broke, they ain't making 6 9 problem they problem. They're not. For what? It's just all internet shit. Niggas don't really want to hurt that dude. You know, I mean, a nigga driving around in Rolls Royces, my nigga, you know what I'm saying, for real, South Beach, and jumping out at the SLS and shit. I'm just saying, my nigga. Trip me out. That's what's going on. I saw him in a Rolls I, Royce by yeah. himself, <laughs> pulled over on the side of the road. Yeah, <laughs> texted nigga like. <laughs> I'm telling you, my nigga. This, this he was in a shit. Rolls Royce by himself. By himself, I saw it. <laughs> I like, like, that's why I tell niggas, nigga. I ain't. I ain't told no nigga. Hey. This what hey look my nigga I tell you I got business with the man, but shit he ain't with me and my projects I ain't seen him since the interview unless he was on Facetime he ain't scared I think the nigga just an accepted he definitely not scared I will tell you that so do you have respect for him for that because of that or nah or is it straight business like. Listen, bro, I'm telling you what I see. Whether y'all respect me or not, it's on y'all. I'm just going to tell you the truth. If the nigga was running around with 300 niggas, i tell you that. He also shoot videos with niggas from New York fly down to the video. Show DJ Head that. I'm just saying. I don't know who all these niggas looking for him. Or he damn sure ain't high. I can tell you he's not telling a lie about he doesn't have security like that. He's not lying. Maybe this whole shit did turn him into some gangster. He ain't afraid to die no more. I mean, just because you ain't afraid to die don't mean you're a gangster. It's a lot of Christians, my nigga, who, you know, they don't fear it either because of their faith. You call the Christians gangsters? 
Nah, but he's dealing with street shit. The Christians are not, you know, those Christians are probably not dealing with that same situation that 6 9 is dealing with. You know? I don't think he respects street shit. I think you're missing his message. So like you're saying, is it, he's saying it's not real, essentially. Um, yeah. But do I respect him as a businessman? Definitely. Very intelligent kid. Six, the six nine, y'all know that's the stage guy. The the Danny dude told him guy. Very smart. And he know what he's doing. He move you niggas like a, like the puppets. You know what I'm saying? Whack, I'm gonna do this, they gonna do that, then I'm gonna do this, and they gonna do that, and then we're gonna do this. For a nigga that y'all don't like, y'all damn show paid y'all anything he do, boy, they try to tell me I gave him a platform in Clubhouse. No, nah, nigga. It should have said Whack 100 invite 69 to Clubhouse. Only eight people showed up to the room. Now, I think not, that's kind of not fair, Wack. That's kind of not, not fair. 15,000 people showed up to the room. Listen, if they tell me this is real shit, RuPaul is giving a room. I'm not going to be there. RuPaul got the most enemies out of anybody in history. That's in the point what I'm saying. I know. I'm just fucking with I'm you. not going to be there. So I'm saying if everybody is saying, fuck this dude, and we don't support this dude, what the fuck is 15, 16,000 people coming over there? Um, you should have heard these niggas. These, I got tired of niggas asking me questions about 6 9 I tell you what. I'm going to bring the nigga to the room. Y'all ask him. I don't know what the fuck this shit. Ask him. Niggas is whack. That bitch ass nigga. Six, you fuck with that bitch. This nigga come to the room. Uh, Mr. 6 9 sir. I couldn't believe it. Wait. Uh... <laughs> I, huh? like, I was in that room trying to ask the question. They was dropping people left and right and all type of stuff. But um, the re that's the reason why I think the six well, nine shit ain't, huh? You heard them people then, like nigga, yeah, I was, no, I heard them. Yeah, they was definitely. I'm like, hold it, on, it was crazy. You niggas be come on, bro. Y'all be attacking me, asking me the questions. Y'all, this is the nigga y'all hate, and when you ask him. It's like, uh, you, excuse me, bro. Uh, excuse yeah, me, if I'm you like, don't mind. They, I just was, wonder. they were sitting there laughing with the nigga. But no, whack. This why I think it ain't fair with the six nine shit. I feel like he kind of act like, like how you said he got niggas like puppets. But it ain't necessarily him though. It's like historical shit that's triggering for niggas, and he ripped that band aid off of old school shit that's triggering for niggas. It ain't cause of him, cause he's so powerful. Like, yo. Know, he got mm. rainbow hair. Is his that's music, homophobia? That's is homophobia. His music is his propaganda. Is his shit? But it's, it's all him. shit that historically upsets niggas. It's a little bit of homophobia. It's a little bit of I'm not black, but I say the n word. It's a little bit of um I'm I'm the underdog yes. and I'm going against all of these niggas. And me. it's a little bit of gangster shit. Listen. And RuPaul, they said RuPaul's giving a room tomorrow at 10 p.m. Whack 100 will not be there. Now, if you tell me Jason Lee giving a room, then I'm going to be there. Because one dude is just an openly gay dude who dressed like a dude, look like a dude. He's just a gay dude. The other motherfuckers try to act like a woman. I don't fuck with them at all. Wait, right? Are we talking <laughs> about RuPaul? It, no, I don't fuck with them type of like. Yeah, but he rich. doesn't fit your demographic. Like, it's not within okay. your frame of business. So I shouldn't fit the demographic of the people that say he's a rat, he's it is. Fuck that dude. Dude ain't no good. Then you shouldn't support him, right? Are we still talking about Rapal? That feels kind of trickish, though, because it's I like like with me. My son and them, that whole little generation, like, well, I don't know why everybody's mad at six nine. Oh, um, so the people tried to kill. Are you, like, are, what? You, are you me? So you see, see now what Wack said when they said Wack before I even start talking to him. Yo, Wack, do you support six nine? I absolutely support six nine. Well, what do you mean? Because my daughter, 
has my credit card on her phone with everything she does. And she likes 6 9 so whatever she's streaming or buying merch, guess what? I'm paying for the shit anyway. I ain't telling my daughter. Check this out, daughter. On power rule, your daddy's a gangster, and I bet not catch you listen to or support 6 9 That's not happening. My daughter's not now, a I ain't thug, saying that, fuck. but I definitely had to sit him down like something was wrong. I felt like he I don't hear nothing the fuck you talking about. I know. Mm-hmm. I feel like I skipped a step or something. I was like, wait he a minute. Cut. Is your is your son a thug? He from the street? Nope. He a nerd. What? Play with robots. He's going to tell you, mom, if my friends fucked my girlfriend and robbed me Facts. and I knew about it, I'm telling on them too. That's exactly <laughs> what he said. I'm telling you what he gonna say. So I'm like, like, what? I'm like, if that not, is... you should have took that nigga to the projects with little Uncle Bay Bay now. You feel me? And, 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 and turned him loose. I definitely didn't. I kept him from the projects with Uncle Bay Bay. That's Uncle what I'm Bay saying. Bay. Like people get mad when I tell the truth. I'm like, yo, like it is what it is. Like you know, me part and said, whack. What if he would have told on you? He would have never told on me. Because he would have never been in those situations with me. It wouldn't have happened. He would have been vacated from the premises of any type of conversation, uh, any type of these activities going on. It's not happening. He would have never told on me. Do you feel like this is almost like a little like Shakespearean revenge for like the New York Bloods trying to do their thing? And now it's like, all right, let us do our thing now. Do you think it's like a... Almost like a beautiful revenge. I mean, I don't know what it is for. I mean, I I called him when the shit was going on. A few of us, and we talked to Mel Murder and Jim Jones and a few of them niggas and, and expressed our distaste for what y'all got to do with the rainbow hair with this red bandana in his hand. What y'all doing, my nigga? We, we called them. They told us respectfully. It's some New York shit. Respectfully. It's they thing. Respectfully. Can we stay out of it? Oh, okay. All right. I have no remorse, but I ain't got an itch of remorse, nigga. Because y'all knew exactly what you was doing. You was playing with fire, and it happened. Respectfully. Y'all told us that. They know. Whack. We know what we doing. We accept him. It's straight. It's solid. It ain't solid, homie. Fuck y'all doing, man. Get that flag out of his hand, homie. What y'all doing? It was more like a money thing because every blood set they respect them. Only the non trade niggas did. You know? Hey, listen, whatever it was, it's supposed to have been done right. It could have been a money thing. But you know, anytime a motherfucker talk about some shit from five years ago and he was only around y'all 12 months, nah, it got deeper than a money thing. Niggas is running the mouth. Big facts. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, at the end of the day, Y'all did some street shit with him. Now, I don't know if everybody watched the interview. I was letting him know what he wasn't, what he would never be. You know what I'm saying? You ain't no blood. Won't never be no blood. Shouldn't have been around the shit. I, that's what I'm telling him. But then they say, well, what? We was right for doing that with him. And you wrong for doing Corporate business with him. I mean, I'm a little confused. I don't know. You know, we don't have gang bang conversations. We don't talk about drugs or guns. We talk about, nigga, you gonna set this offer for this? You want a little more money on this? You want to do this? You don't want to do that? All right, boom, turn it, boom, 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 boom. That's it. That's what we talking about. I don't know what them niggas talking about. And I ain't allowed a nigga. That was the case. I went to sign Blueface. Whack, he a crib. I don't give a fuck. What that got to do with business? <laughs> fuck you talking about? <laughs> Big facts. Big facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, you know, shit. I, I don't, you ain't finna tell me how to conduct my business. What you gonna tell me next? How to kiss my wife? Fuck going on right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, the streets is the streets. Corporate America is corporate America. And that's just how I see it. You Period. Got, you got two box stores? We are not talking about two box. 
Okay, <laughs> fuck it. I played I was going with with us. <laughs> I'm not was, talking about Tupac. It was getting quiet. I was like, fuck Hey, y'all tried to bait my dog. I probably, don't, I probably don't know. Oh, yeah, you know what's crazy about Tupac? It's probably all y'all know the story. No, I don't know the story because I don't know. The I story. don't think it's no. Pe- I don't. It ain't no rock that ain't been. That's that's untired. That's some real shit. I think he probably the only artist to where his full story really been exploited. Like it's like right there. As you know, he wasn't out here but eleven months for his demise. Bro, all y'all know his story. Nah, sometimes I just be having like you know undercover stories you never heard before. Like, damn, I never knew that. Okay, I mean, there's I always know. a bunch of other shit that went on. What you know is that shit be including other people. All right, well I changed the whole subject. I got another question, and I'm half sleep, so sorry if my question is stupid, but I'm thoroughly entertained. Um, what do you think about artists or different creatives who are like multi talented? Like sometimes people can rap. And they maybe uh like maybe want to hold shows or maybe they also are uh not maybe not quite producers, but some different actors. They have all of these different multiple talents. What do you what do you think about that? Do you think you need to choose one and focus on that one? Or do you think that it is like room to kind of dibble and dabble in different No, hell no. I wouldn't just, I wouldn't focus on one. I would focus on all of them shit. That- the odds of you being successful or having some success is greater. You know what I mean? Because you got to do it just rapping. He just depending on rap. You got to do it just rapping and, uh, you know, uh, acting and and motherfucking, you know, writing uh, movie scripts. Shit, you need to do them all. You know what I mean? Your chances at winners, winning is greater. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I don't advise nobody to limit themselves. It's a big fact. At all. You know what I'm saying? I don't advise me. If you a mechanic and a plumber and electrician, shit. Yeah, because sometimes I be hearing people like, well, in order to be successful, you got to just pick one and bear it down. And I'm like, Nah. It's, it's real hard to choose like different shit come up at different time and it's like you can't really choose all that shit is part of you so yeah I like that advice nah you got uh, DJ Head in there shit he, he you know he's a radio personality you know he's also an A&R he's a fucking DJ Producer. you know what I'm saying <laughs> They got all kind of ass. Hell no. You know what I mean? The shit. One may not be kicking and you know, you ride on the other one. Nah, I, I don't I don't advise anybody to ever limit themselves to what they skilled to do. So so if what, a motherfucker I, tell you you can't do it, go harder. That's a big facts. So look, Wack, I got something for you. So like due to your background, right? How obligated you feel to the set? That you that you feel like you have to trivia or put in for the set. I'm talking about my neighborhood and the streets, obligated. Yeah, nigga, did you know I'm a daddy, right? I know that. <laughs> but, but how do Look, you listen? Feel? Not just a father. I'm a daddy. Like I'm a cheer dad. Like I travel around to cheerleading competitions. Like I'm a dad. <laughs> No, no, not even putting in work. Like more like like you have to give back to the hood. How obligated you feel? Well, I, what you mean by give back? You mean like by, it could be money wise or putting people on. You mean like to my homeboys? Yeah. Oh no, I'm not obligated to do nothing. I don't want to do. You got to remember, nigga. I gave the orders. I didn't take them. So gotcha. you know, uh, my obligation is first and foremost to my family. You know what I mean? And then you know, I really, I help the ones that won't help. That like. If you come asking me some shit that's going to keep you in the streets, I'm going to ignore you. But if you come tell me, man, look, man, I want to go drive a truck, man. I'm trying to get this motherfucking, it cost me 2000 to go to truck driving school. And you just telling me about you, it's a good chance. I'm going to go down there and pay it and tell them to call you. I didn't did that for many people. You know what I mean? So, you know, um, I'm not obligated to go over there and do shit. 
You know what I mean? You know, everybody know what everybody do. You know what I mean? You know the ones you can go over there and make do something. You know the ones that can have something done to your ass. You know what I mean? So, you know, when you've been from a neighborhood 30 plus years, you ain't even got to be there and you still there. But my first obligation, first and foremost, to my wife and kids. Period. Respect it, respect it. I mean, anything, anything that's that's against that, then it's just, you just the enemy anyway. So hanging at the park, in the garages, uh, and the little hood parties, all that shit, all that is a threat to my existence and my freedom, right? Which means that uh, I'm going against my obligation that I have to my family. So I'm not going to freak with those things and do those things. I mean, shit I did in the first book, second book, third book, fourth book, I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm like in 10th book, ninth chapter. Some of my homeboys is my age. They still in the first book, third chapter. So I get how they thinking because I thought like that when I was 15. And I don't expect them to think the way I think today because they still in the first book, third chapter. They still writing their shit. Some of them ain't going to come out of that. You know, it's going to say, given life sentence, 30 years of life, or shot and paralyzed, or shot and killed, or alcoholic, uh, cancer of the lip. You know what I'm saying? That's They shit go in right there. Uh, I'm still reaching, my nigga. I got passports. I done been around the world seven times. You know what I mean? I still got other things I want to do. I'm an entrepreneur. I own multiple businesses. Um, I got a son that's graduated college. I got a daughter that's on her way to college. You know what I mean? I buy coastal. My real estate is right, but it's still some things I, I want to do. So I'm, my book is different. I just understand down there. You know what I'm saying? I, but I ain't down there. Hmm. I, I agree. You know, no, I ask you that because it is, right? Like, I'm from New York. And like I was like I'm I'm 28, about to be 29, and I was I was on the set since I was 12. And the funny thing, like I'm a fashion designer, and the funny thing is I was putting in work for the hood, had a big influence talking about people switching their whip to, to my set just because who I am. And then it hit me that the big homies was manipulating, like they was using me through the influence I had. And when I asked them, like, put that bread up, I want to be a fashion designer, like niggas laughed in my face, like, new homie, you you putting on for the set, like. But you think you're going to be a fashion designer? And that shit hit me different. And that kind of made me fall back. And, like, now I'm in a position where, like, I'm very successful to a point where, I had, like, I had to move out the East Coast because, like, I'm, I was too touchable. So then now I'm in a position where I be feeling like I got to put niggas on. But then I realize, like, everybody not meant to be a boss. You know, and, like, like I try, like, 